gonna we're doing a trip down memory lane again we're going to install 3.11 3.11 which is the work groups edition of Microsoft Windows which was the one that sat on top of DOS <coughs> you know obviously um, a little bit of history I, I, my history I'll talk about my history basically I started off with 3.0 which was the very 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 first version I tested out I I played with it when I became a programmer. Now, the machine I had, and I'll drop a, um, a video or uh, a picture of the the term of the system I used was an old IBM AT, and it was a 286. Now it stated in the hardware um, system. Oh wait, I think it was an 886 actually. No, I think it was a 286. It was an 80286. And I was able to install a copy of Windows 3.0 to that machine via um, Laplink, which was a com com communication software, because we didn't have, um, I didn't have the floppy drives, because they all came on 1.44, three, three and a half inch floppy disk disks. So what I ended up doing was doing a lamp link to my father's new laptop, which um, was some form of, uh, probably IBM one. They dealt with a lot with main main branding ones. And um, I <laughs> I would begin the file transfer. I think it was about a couple of six hours or something. It's ridiculous that. Uh, let, let's just say we went out for the day. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to launch the DOS environment. Obviously, this is not simulating that hardware. This is simulating what I've got preset at the moment. So obviously, you can tell it's a Celeron 524K and all so on. Um, Yeah, so that basically that that took a while to launch. I launched it. The hardware was a 30 megabyte drive, and most most of the space was taken up by Windows 3.0. Now, what we're doing today is go. We're gonna go and install 3.11. Sorry for yawning, guys. I've just woke up. I've been up for about 10 minutes or 20 minutes. I've had a co I've got a coffee and stuff. I have a sleep in the afternoons because we had a massive big thunderstorm and. I just slept it out. Um, anyway, um, obviously, as you can see, it's taking it it's a bitty time. Yeah, so um, it was an old machine. It had 512k on base and 640 on an expanded memory card this thing this big PC was it a 1541 what did they call them I can't remember now I'll, I'll, I'll drop a picture um, in any second um, to show it you show you this computer it had two a two megabyte graphics card which was called to the max and it um, yeah it was a pretty good one right so what we got installed obviously is just a standard MS DOS configuration we got the CD ROM drives we um, I can't remember what win a 20 is is it part of the memory manager I don't know anyone mention in the comments because I have forgotten basically but um, and I'm using an MTA. I, I don't think they're really that relevant. I think they're just backed up, aren't they? The MTM drivers. If I go, uh, whoops, I can tell I'm not awake. Config.ntm. I've got a few feeling it's the old ones. Yes, it is. So I can just delete anything MTM. That's not a problem. Right, okay, so obviously he's done a backup for the old. Um, so we're going to now 
we're going to install <coughs> I don't know if you can see my mouse on this recording <coughs> but we're going to install the by floppy drives by floppy disks and um, the 311 which is these ones these are grabbed, grabbed off the archive.org is it archive.org website so we'll begin with the first one um, we'll just wait for it to log in and there's your startup screen right okay so I thought I wonder if that's how it identified which disk was which because the very first file was disk one <laughs> right so we're gonna go let's do this um, I'm doing this like sort of take you down memory lane. There might be two f two videos to this because the other one's an extended version where it shows me actually installing MS DOS. Right here we go. Um, there's the standard MS DOS screen or the standard um, installation screen typically of uh, Microsoft. I'll just do an Express. Um, the folder is Windows and it's on eDrive. No, we recommend that you set up the work groups in the following directory. This is will upgrade your previous. Okay. See, with the thing with Windows is it can run from eDrive. That's a CD-ROM drive, isn't it? One second. I'm just curious. E drive, what's on E drive? Is that the C is that a CD ROM drive? Oh I Oh I think this was the mess up one. Right no I'm not gonna be installing it to that one obviously because it's I'm gonna be installing it to C drive because this is not active this bit. Actually I think that one one second so obviously it doesn't identify. I'm going to take the CD-ROM drive out because that's the that's the, right. Okay. So if we try E drive now, it won't be there. Oh, where is it? No, it shouldn't be. Yeah, there you go. It was ah, that's something I didn't know about. So Microsoft never worked on that one. Right. Okay. So basically, it was pointing at a CD-ROM drive folder. So it obviously doesn't identify the hardware. Right. We're going to go back to a drive sorry and we're gonna run setup so I'm assuming now it should look for C drive right <coughs> so we look for that there you go look and we go oh right okay so there you go it automatically is installing it so it'll probably install it to C drive Oh. Yeah, a lot of the very first time I installed, not 3.11, 3.11, I think I, I upgraded this, this 2.86 to a 3.86, a 3.86 DX I think it was. It was a good motherboard. Eventually though, um, I kept it for about 20 years. Oop, there we go. Okie dokie, right we swap for another drive. Right, so we pick second disc. I'll just make my mouse appear again. Okay, please wait while it, uh, ah, you know what it's doing don't you? Is setting up a graphic environment to it. Ah, it does, doesn't it? Yes, I remember now. Here we go, look. That's a site for sore eyes, isn't it? Setter will attempt to detect network. All right, okay. I would say this was the, one of the best graphic user environments because it didn't actually have control of your, of your system. You know when you um, 
they still run on the dash environment and a lot of people didn't get used to that because they did just prefer to go back, drop back into MS-DOS and launch Windows as an application and not as an operating system. No, obviously when Microsoft <coughs> in Windows, 90, Windows 95 changed all that by giving it its own kernel and um, the, they had a way with the DOS environment in, in favour of a graphic user interface rather like Apple really. Apple, Apple really moved to the graphics environment when they started building a Mac, didn't they? They were do I think they were doing it stuff with Lisa Apple Lisa. Which was but I don't know too much about Apple. All I know is that uh when they were building machines, Steve Wozniak wanted a graphical user interface. And obviously the way that they built the machines Steve Wozniak which was the other f founder of Apple um, had a lot of into into you know inclusion of the operating you know of the hardware like but I, I don't know too much oh there we go right so bear with me I know I talk a lot so product number you don't need a product number on these I don't think Oop. there we go Continue. Here we go. So yeah, so basically, um, I I was setting up this machine, you know, for uh, this application for my own at home. Um, I started learning to write code for Windows applications. Oh. Right, so we need to pop up the other drive. Disk free. Disk three. <coughs> I mean, disk free. There we go. Yeah, I miss those days because everything now is all. You know what I mean? It, every, uh, you know the installing off a floppy disk drive, and the fun you'd have if one of the disks was damaged. <laughs> oh, that was a nightmare. Um, and if you if it came originally on like say Windows 95, Windows 95 came originally on 27 1.4 inch floppies. 27? Oh, was it 25? 25 or 27? Uh, but it, you know, it, they always shipped with the same version. But it was the key, what changed, how it run. Oh, there we go. I don't know why it does that funny beeping sound. Some call for that. Right, so that's disc four. I've got a feeling it's the sound card. It's trying to simulate. I think the only thing, I don't know whether or not it's this computer or whether or not it's just the emulator in general but I think there's a bit of a problem with the mouse driver for it because if you look it's not, it, oh that's not too bad maybe it might be the same because I've got a, a gaming mouse and I've, I've, I've got, I don't know whether or not this mouse is on its way out I think I might need, no I'm not going to look for another, it's been a good mouse this yeah. Sounds like he's taking off. Right, ah, uh, six. We need six. This is where it's in stock. Uh, oh, oh, fi five. I'm could have sworn it said. All right, okay, five. Did I pick five or six? Five. What? Did I pick the wrong one by accident? Alright. Five, alright. It's installing the fonts in it. An integral part of um, Windows, the fonts were.
You see, they didn't really, because of the fact that you were still running on an old MS-DOS, you had the 8x3 character set length. Because if you look at them, you got 8 characters, dot, and then FLT or TTF, which was the old MS-DOS characters. But when they upgraded, they turned it into a 32-bit, it means that the character lengths can be changed. So, you know, it can be any... That's why nowadays... You could type whatever you want in to be called the file name. Whoops. But in those days, it was the 8x3 law base that lay. Right, 6. Oh, Baba Mia. Excuse me. It's usually the last ones of the printer drivers. Huh. Got a smart drive and stuff. He's built his own, built, he's got his own built in smart drive and all that kind of stuff. Alright, here we go. Right. So there you go. Printer installation. Yeah, I need to fill around with the hardware. So it's right. Networks. Um, oh, shut up. There we go. Oops. Alright, okay, that's alright. It's actually, that's good, that. That's, that's quite shocking, that. Actually, I'm quite surprised with it. It doesn't recognise it's a CD ROM drive. And you can't identify, you can't use it. <laughs> That's a bit silly, isn't it? Right, so let's put something in the CD ROM drive. Have we got anything we can put in the CD? So it's um, set ups. It's identifying it as a C as a normal disc by the looks of it. So we shall give it a um We'll just give it that image for the moment. Oh my, this is, mouse is terrifying. Right, okay. Yeah, it doesn't identify hardware. It only identifies what's available on the system. So in other words, if you have an E-Drive, an E-Drive being a CD-ROM drive, it's now checking the e-drive <laughs> for files but it's like you know it's deep scan none of it will be needs all oh, right okay so it's it'll install all these stupid programs it's not even on there there you go look right okay and i'll s skip the tutorial so i think everybody knows how to use windows uh i'll go to whoops Right, so there's Windows. All installed, ready to glow. Right, okay, so what we're going to do here, and we're going to change the hardware, because I'm not happy with that mouse. I need to do something with the mouse. So we're going into this emulator, we're going to mouse, and what, configuration, there's nothing there, just com ports. Right, Microsoft mouse, Microsoft bus mouse. Let's try that one. And uh, nine times out of ten, it reboot the machine. Told you. I might actually be trying... Oh, what's that? This format in Winimage. Wait. 
Where does that come from? I think we'll sort that one out. We'll take that off the machine. I don't know where that come from. Win image 6.5, whatever. We'll sort that out. This formatted with win image. Okay. That's going. <laughs> I don't know what it's doing there. You'll find this on one of my other videos as well. I will mention it in the actual because I'll, I'll I'll cut this and put it on the end of um or in fact I won't even cut it. Here we go. It might be the mouse driver was causing the problem problems. Here we go. So if I go edit. Yeah, the mouse. Oh, uh, okay. But can it still? Can it do it that way? Can it? But and can it? Sis. No, it doesn't do it that way. Okay. Right. Obviously, it's not in that one. So it's the MS DOS one. Which it is, I do not like that thing powering up screen. Okay, so it's not in there neither. Oh, is that set version? Okay, I, in fact, you don't need that. You got CD ROM drive, you got that uh, kind of stuff stuck. Alright, okay. Let's just see where it where we went for that. Um, was it MS DOS dot sys? Whoops. All oh, right. Okay. Fair enough. <coughs> Obviously, if I run Windows now, it should launch. It looks different on a wide screen. Obviously, because I'm using a monitor and it's emulated. Because the thing used to be really really thin and uh, like a kind of a darker color. Let's just see how the mouse is. There's the old memory manager. And where's the mouse? Is it not running a compatible mouse? <coughs> Yeah, it doesn't look like it's running a compatible mouse, does it? <sighs> right, okay. Obviously, it doesn't like the uh, mouse driver I picked. So we're going to go with... This is the thing about doing it on the fly like this. Because the machine is not... Let's try a PS2 mouse, which was a common one. Three button mouse, that'll do. In fact, I might change the graphics card as well, make it a little bit more. What have we got here? Right, a di I'll try a diamond trio. Mark 64. It does simulate the hardware. S Verge, Voodoo, T Sync, 3DFX, Banshee. Matrox, Mystique, Millennium, 
what memory were these? Oh, eight. Well, all right, okay, so let's go really, really maximum millennium out, right? Okay. <clears throat> Oh, okay. Our next XGA, XGA graphics, what we've got here. XGA2, alright, okay. Let's just see what it does. It might actually, I might not actually include that. I might just include that one. So, in other words, it's got a chipset one. So, okay, let's take it to that one, right? There we go. Oh, what's he doing with the graphic? Is it my eyes or are the font screwed up then? I wonder if that's in the, in the part part. I wonder if that's in the partition table. This very um, this disc formatted with the Win image. I I just done a sys transfer. That I don't know why it's doing that. No system disk. Boot from the hard drive. Hard disk. It's weird that they used to call it back in the day. They used to call it hard drive, but everyone still call it hard disk. But the obviously the the critical the critics the ones in the science magazines and all call it a hard drive. No, it isn't. It's a hard disk. <laughs> There we go. All right, so we've got a mouse driver, a different one. Now then, if I go edit, this was the big thing. What was it like in the MS DOS? Of that? Um, mm, that not too bad. Uh, it was a bit randy. But what would it be like in Windows? In Windows, is there a driver for Windows? Does it find a driver for it? Because it should be a. There we go. I think the sensitivity was too high, wasn't it? Right. Okay. So let's just let's just bring down the sensitivity. Oh, mouse. The mouse clicks are a bit rubbish, you know. Right. Okay. Slow mouse tracking. Alright, there you go. Okay. You didn't have the, the ability to control um, the speed of the mouse, could you really? So you could like, oh, in here obviously you had all these old, excuse me. Oh yes, look at that. It's taking me back some years, this. This was the fonts. Were they the fonts that you could actually... Oh. Right, so these were the ones built in. Wow, this mouse is a bit... Ooh. Yeah, I need to... I think I've made it to... Wow. Right, let's just, can you do restore? There isn't a default. Ah! You could sell Microsoft really, really cool. There we go, just centralise, let's try it. That's not too bad, like, I think it was originally already like that. Um, Oh, 
There you go. Right, so let's try that one. There you go. There you go. That's better. Let's change the patterns to boxes. Keyboard. Yeah, we know our keyboard mouse. International drivers. Sometimes it's a bit, maybe because it's the emulation, I don't know. I should have to, you know what, I've got this one, which is the 86 box. I'm going to look at um, the other box, wasn't it, what do you call it? Um, DOS box, is it? When I first started using it on the older machines, it was, I didn't like it at all. Because it didn't simulate hardware, but it seems to dissimulate certain hardwares now. I don't know whether or not it's accurate compared to the hardware of what this, emula uh, this emulator uses, but it definitely does not like the mouse sometimes. Right, so VGA. Change system settings. Right, 800. Well, I think let's go 256 colour. Go normal fonts. Okay, is it going to ask for a disk? Oh, it's a. Oh. Right, okay, so we need to go to the disk. That's why he just started installing these on cabs. Cab folders, wasn't it? Right, it's disk 2. Ooh. There you go. Reset windows. Just continue. The keyboard's the same. That'll do. Right, let's go. Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> right, okay, so let's go exit here. And let's see if, see if it allows that driver. Oh, don't like that, does it? So obviously it's not a compatible driver. Moving on. <laughs> right, can you get a guy? Would it get out of it? No, obviously. You have to come out of it. You have to reboot the system on that one. Obviously, it's not a compatible driver. That's the thing, it was never correct. It was never um, accurate. That's the Matrox one. Ah. I've done a lot of work, actually. When I first started out my career in computer software, it, it basically was the, 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 the jumping from MS-DOS to the Windows environment. And it was 3.11, I think, that I actually properly started. I did actually have 3.0. But um, when I started developing software, it was 3.11 on work groups because I was learning how to do networking anyway. Um, yeah, it takes me back, that does. I think I started using um, Paradox, which was the database program. Moved, moved around. I'd never really done machine code on the 8086. It mainly just the Z80 and the 6.5.2s, but... Yeah, it was just a bit... That's getting on my nerves, that disformatted with win image. I'd be looking at ways to get rid of it because I think it's actually in the petition table. It's actually quite naughty them doing that because you're wasting space on your petition. You know, in your boot, se boot sector. I think it's held in there. So what we need to do is go, we need to Windows, go it, oops, Windows, whoops, Windows, and go Setup, 
okay so we need to go to change the graphics XGA I think we had the availability of XGA didn't we so let's go for that okay alright so it's obviously copying the file uh, alright this five excuse me this five we've got it we've got it there tra la la patience this six have we got it in there whoops uh, rah, 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 rah. there we go right so let's go run windows oh poo poo head right okay so we've got a confliction on video card all right so we'll go set up that could be why we're getting issues so what we're going to do is we're just going to run it from the standard 8514 small fonts that'll do there we go god's sake that's why people complained I know we were glad back then that CD-ROM arrived you know all right okay which one's that disc 2 and disc 2 this is what we had to do with this is what we had to deal with back then fish I don't mind but you just with this five a minute ago okay okay seriously I know the last disc was disc six of two installs ago why well, I don't know all oh, right okay you will it needs the disc on it <laughs> it's just me complaining as usual we're British, we complain. Get used to it. Right, okay, so if I run Windows now. Okay, have I broke it? <laughs> yeah, it's not running it. E bag gum. Right, okay. 51 graphics, right. Okay, so maybe I should simulate an IBM graphics card chipset. Paradise, IBM MDA. Let's go IBM MDA. Right. Okie dokie, let's try that. Right, okay. Let's go. Uh. It even looks like it's an MDA screen, actually. Monochrome adapter. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I went down the wrong hole. Ah. <coughs> oh. oh man. Uh, can you hear dogs barking? That's with them on the street. There's an owner of a couple of dogs up the road and he just lets them run wild. If that was in the UK, I don't live in the UK, if that was in the UK, the dogs, they'd have to be taken away by the RSPCA, isn't it? Should take the owners away.
I think people get the gist anyway. I think if I launch that now. <laughs> yeah, because it's running MDA, isn't it? So it'll just it'll just act weird. Yeah, 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 no worries. Right, okay, so I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to call it a day because you've seen it running. I know what's up with it. You know, I just need to revert back to.